everyone, welcome to Connected. It's a new month, I wish May brings you positive thoughts, high vibrations, strength and laughter. Lots of laughter. May 1st just passed and I want to take the opportunity to send a big shout out to all my working people all over the world. Whether you work at home or in an office, indoors or outdoors, happy Workers' Day, happy Labor's Day. I am thankful for all of you. I am Fabiana Espinosa and I'm connecting with you from Santa Cruz, Bolivia in South America. If you are in Bolivia, you see me on the Abia Yala channel and if you're not, you can see the show through Facebook and Twitter and later on when the show is over, you can find us on our YouTube channel. talk about music. Music is therapeutic, not only for the artists that play it, but also for the audience that listen to it. It has the power to calm one down, to inspire, to give energy, and even to some of us to make us feel accompanied. I invited a musical friend that does his magic through the beautiful sound of the violin. His name is George Lamam, and he will connect with us from San Francisco, California. Let's meet George Lamam. George Lamam is a solo violinist exemplifying the Arab style of instrumental improvisation. His repertoire spans a wide range of Arabic music from classical to contemporary popular songs. Having performed with the most well-known singers of the Middle East, his reputation as an instrumental accompanist precedes him. His compositions and performance excerpts are included in his scores for two award-winning documentaries, Occupation 101 and Tea on the Axis of Evil, and he recorded a well-known folkloric dabki, an Arab folk dance, in 2016, featured on the film Wrestling Jerusalem. Following the list of an extensive range of creations, his newest CD, Opus Omnia, was released in 2017. pleasure today to introduce George Lamam. He is talking to us all the way from San Francisco. George, welcome to Connected and thank you for taking the time to spend with us and to share the beautiful art that you do. Let's go ahead with the first question. George, tell us about your beginnings. How did you start on the path of music? Did you have any influences there? Well, hi and thanks for having me on your show. Um, well, I came from a musical family. My mother uh, was a singer and my father was actually a mov movie producer in Egypt in the 40s and 50s. Uh, and uh, I, I was born in Lebanon uh, as a refugee because my father is Palestinian. He, he left uh, 1947 and all my brothers and sisters were born in Lebanon as a refugee. But um, so, and also my father uh, was going to Egypt and doing, uh, uh, producing movies in Egypt. And, uh, and then we moved to United Arab Emirates, Dubai specifically. And there we're in school, it was a music program in school and where I, me and my brothers start uh, learning uh, music and uh, we started also playing in the nightclubs and we played with the big singers who comes from different parts of uh, the art world. Uh, we used to play also seven, actually seven nights a week. <laughs> and we used to go to, oh, school, wow. we used to, go to school and, uh, and... So you started at a really early age. How old are you when you started doing all of these presentations? 
the first actually uh, the first show probably I was 16. Oh, I was wow. years old, yeah. Uh, I want to add also uh, there's a very 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 sad thing happened uh, last week. I lost my brother, who's a great musician. Oh, uh, I'm sorry to hear uh, that. He passed away last last Tuesday. Yeah, he was a great great accordion player, Arabic accordion player. And uh, I'm mourning that right now, but I'm very happy to be with you on the on this program and talk about my history and uh, and the Arabic music in general. I'm sorry to hear that, George. Well, I'm sure you're always going to remember fondly and um, I'm sure mm -hmm. you have tons of memories with him. So he was an accordion player and you started on the violin. Why the violin? How was your path learning and improving your skills? Well, it's funny because I did start playing the accordion too, me and my brother, and, uh, because that was the only instrument available at school is accordion. We used to play in the... In the uh, school band but then uh, my teacher said you're brothers you know and you probably want to, to check another instruments after six months uh, he starts playing the violin for me he said uh, you play the violin and I fall in love with the sound and the next day I went I bought the violin and start taking violin classes with my first teacher who was who was Egyptian teacher and then uh, I continued uh, um, I continued playing the violin and we start me and my brothers practicing together on different instruments. I also have another third brother who's a percussionist. He played different hand percussion, Middle Eastern hand percussion. So, and we get to the band together as brothers. Um, and this is how everything started. Like, like uh, I, I never knew I'm gonna be like 100% uh, uh, professional musician. It all starts with at home. <laughs> I see. And then, so you guys started and learned it in school, like at school, like music class mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And how about when you graduated? How did you continue uh, developing your skills and where? Well, because my mother's connection with a lot of uh, artists from Lebanon and different parts of the world, of the Arab world, uh, we start taking private lessons with different, everybody that like, comes to visit Dubai from Lebanon, uh, they come and give us classes. So actually, we learned from uh, different different teachers, and also we learned uh, on the stage. You know, by playing behind uh, other musicians who are accomplished, um, and you know, by by playing on the stage, and you get even more experience as a performer. Uh, right. So uh, many many teachers. We learn a little bit from here and here and here, and uh, kind of kind of self taught. <laughs> And uh, also, did you guys used to like play songs from other artists? Do you guys used to make your own? Or it was all kind of like an improvisation kind of thing that it was like at the moment creation kind of music? Well, when we started, as you know, we always, you always like to learn uh, top 10, you say. <laughs> but also, also, we have a great composer and great singers uh, from the golden age era where we got classic Arabic um, so we, we learned both so we, we used to, to learn by ear listening to music to, to the uh, to the sound or the piece of music and learn it by ear and then later we get educated by um, how to read music but uh, but mostly mostly we used to play you know uh, classical Arabic which is uh, uh, everybody knows uh, in the Middle East and then later um, uh, like when I came to United States, 1987, then I started to create my own music and compose my own. Also, being in United States and being in San Francisco, you will meet a lot of artists from different parts of the world. George, your career is kind of divided. You had like you started a very young age back home, and then like almost 30 almost 40 years ago you moved to the u.s and then you had like a, diff, a second like second Thanks. part of your career mm -hmm. correct correct we, we used to it was a lot of uh, uh, popular singers uh, in middle east when i was in dubai so i did accompany a lot of uh, singers well-known names um in uh, in, uh, in the field of music middle east and even when I came to United States here, I also I toured with some of them. And then I then I started to find out I wanted to create my own 
my own path and my own sound. Um, so right. I start I start making CDs and albums and my own composition, including uh, other comp composers from different uh, countries. Okay, so tell us about Bolivia. Like two years ago, you were here, actually three. And what brought you here? How was that experience for you? Well, the first time uh, when I met Eddie Navia in, uh, in their place here, they called Peña Pachamama. They have uh, uh, actually a vegan restaurant, and I, I will call it I will call it a, a, a culture center. <laughs> it's a it's a restaurant, uh -huh. but also a culture center because. They, they have different styles of music played in their... Um, it's a small venue, but it's an amazing venue. Uh, so, accidentally, I, I, I was there and I met Eddie Navia, and uh, also I met his son, Gabriel Navia. And I, uh, I I made a deal with them. I wanted to, to, to do an Arabic night there in their place. This is how it started. So I start doing uh, once a month, I'm still doing it as today. <laughs> Once a month we do an Arabic night there and also including uh, different artists and belly dancing. And tw oh, uh, awesome. 2014, Eddie told me, do you like to come to Bolivia? I'm, uh, because Eddie was nominated to, to Latin Grammy that year. Uh, and I was on the album. I recorded, I think, three pieces with them on that album. I told him I would love to come to Bolivia. I said maybe we can also make a big tour and including uh, flamenco dancers and belly dancers in the show. So he was uh, after he no uh, was nominated. Um, so he was invited actually by the Minister of Culture in Bolivia to come and do the tour, and I came with them, and uh, it was an amazing, amazing tour. We went to the seven different cities. Uh, oh wow! Big theater, it was a big group. Um, uh, I think we were around 15 uh, between musicians and dancers. Uh, yeah, I, I was there for 33 days, seven cities. Uh, it was kind of the highlight. Uh, I, I love being in Bolivia. The hospitality, the people are friendly. And uh, well, thank God we have. Uh, people was, who speaks English, <laughs> so I was <laughs> <being able to laughs> right. with, the, with the people there, yeah, and after that, um, I get another uh, chance to, to believe you again, as a duet, me and Gabrielle only, I was invited by the dance company who was with us in 2014 to come because they were doing a big, um, big theater, uh, dance theater in La Paz. Um, so they invited me again with Gabrielle to come as a duet and also we, we picked up the musicians from Bolivia to play with us so and we created a tour which is we went on also another five cities in Bolivia uh, that was 2016. Wow that is so great I love to hear that you actually had a great time here and that your experiences was positive um, George we're gonna go to a fast cut and we'll be right back with another couple of questions People at home, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Connected. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everyone. We are still connected with George Lamam, who is talking to us all the way from San Francisco. And he has been sharing with us his path on the music industry, on the music experience that he has having since he was a little kid. George, thank you so much for the time that you're taking to be with us. And unfortunately, we are running out of time, but I have a couple of questions that I would like to ask you. Um, you your path, it's very impressive because you started at a very young age. Like we can say you have already more than 30 years of this profession and 30 years is a lot, it's a long time to help on the same job. So definitely congratulations for that. And um, you shared uh, numerous presentations in different part of different parts of the world with different artists. From all of those, which one is the most memorable and why? Oh, wow, there's um, it's kind of very hard to say because you know each venue, each place I go, it's it's kind of special because you know I focus on that show, I focus on that um, on that program. Uh, but uh, so I, I do from 
theater work with dance companies to concerts and, and big places which is just only music. Uh, again, when I was in Bolivia, so actually, I will say Bolivia is really one, one of my highlights. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I did a tour uh, with um, uh, 2009. With uh, was it? This tour was created um, by uh, a great musician who actually teach in Berkeley of music in, um, in in Boston here in the United States. His name is Simon Shaheen, one of the biggest biggest name, and uh, he's a violinist and oud player. So he did the tour um, in 2009 and called Aswat. It means voices. We were 18 uh, 18 musicians. And four, sing four major singers from uh, from different parts of the Arab world, and was focused on on the music from the Golden Age era, which is all the songs they sang came from movies from uh, 40s, 50s, and 60s, and uh, that tour was amazing uh, because it's educational. Uh, we really it was the traditional and uh, classic Arab music that was also one of my highlights. Uh, I will say, um, I will never forget. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed playing every note, being in the being in the, that, that beautiful orchestra. Um, right. Yes, each each one each one is just kind of different. Uh, but some some of of the tours, you know, just stays in your mind, and and you wish it never ends. <laughs> right. And George, tell me. You know that all artists are always like by the hand are all, always have the power to bring people together so i've seen uh while i was reading about your story that you have worked with the foundation join hands in order to help or like provide some assistance for refugees tell us about that experience please oh that was amazing that was two years ago we were uh, yeah we were invited by open hands to go to greece um, uh, that was um, an island called Sh Shalkida, where uh, where there is a refugee camp there. Uh, mo uh, most of them came from Syria and Iraq. Uh, and I was able to do, to do with this uh, to go with this group also this is a group we play together called Wobbly World 10 musicians from different uh, cultures so it was amazing to go inside those camps and talk to the refugees uh, kind of I was oh, a musician so later because because I was kind of the only one who speaks Arabic <laughs> so I was translating for everybody uh, connect and we the musicians spread around the different uh, refugee tents talk to them and involved with them and uh, just I, I played I played the violin there for them I sang in Arabic they were like very emotional singing with me especially when I sing a lot you know song uh, after being a week there in the end of the of the tour um, they did a big uh, fundraise event there where where, um, where it was a big stage uh, they made it outside on one of the ruins uh, from the 14th century uh, castle uh, on, the, on the mountain of the island, it was it was amazingly beautiful, and they brought actually refugees from those camps and the buses to come and see the to come and see the concert. Uh, that and is Greece great. is yeah, Greece is very 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 well um, take care of this. Uh, I, I was amazed by the, the Greek uh, government how really they treated those uh, those refugees. They welcomed them in their country. George, I love to hear that. It's very beautiful because music has that power to make people not to to like bring you memories and to to help you feel love. Yeah, because because I felt you know I felt like going to myself because I was a refugee myself. So I had a big connection with those people. I mean, we cried, we laughed, we played music, but. Um, I was very, very happy to do it, and we might be going back. Yeah, actually, last week I was connected by another guy. He said, "Do you like to go back to Greece? Any time, any time. I'd like yes. to go and help and make these people feel happy." Yeah. 
George, please tell us about your latest compilation, your latest album. How was the process of creating it and how is it going today? Oh, I loved working on the album. Uh, actually, I can show it to you. It's called Opus Omnia, which is have uh, different artists in it, um, including, of course, uh, Gabriel Navia. Uh, he was actually here in my house and we composed that piece. We start, you know, he, come, he comes to my salon here in my house and then we jam together. I mean, we came up with this piece where he started uh, doing the, you know, the Latin style and and, and then I thought, ah, oh, why would not put this um, Arabic style in it? So we came up with, um, we, lo we loved it. And then finally when we recorded it, they said, what, what name are we going to give this uh, piece? I told him, well, we'll have to name it Arabic and Latin. Uh, I told him, what do you think about um, Ola? You know what the Spanish means? And yalla, yalla in Arabic it means come on. So it's it's rhymed together. So we call it Ola Yalla. <laughs> this is kind of one of the Ola Yalla. It sounds great, actually. Uh, for the first time, I was exper uh, trying to see if I can do jazz. Uh, uh, so there's uh, the beginning of the album. There is um, a piece of music called uh, Grooving on Grappelli. Grappelli is a great jazz violinist. So I was listening to him, trying to imitate him. So, so I created a piece uh, which is uh, starts the album with grooving on Grappelli, uh, and also worked uh, with uh, another composition was given to me by this great oud player. He lives in Los Angeles. His name is Nasser Musa. Uh, has, uh, of course, most the Arabic style to it, and also Gabriel composed another piece for me on this album. Uh, my my father uh, passed 26 passed away in 2016. He was 92 years old, and created a piece yeah. called My Father's Song. It's, it ends the album ends with that piece. So um, so when I create music, I just I uh, whatever happens to happening at that moment, the music comes and and to present that feeling and. Uh, present what I'm doing right now, so it's, it's it's connected to reality. George, let's go again. Um, I want to know a little bit about your journey since it's a long career, and through all of this time, what would you say is the biggest challenge that you have had, and on the other hand, also the biggest gratification that you remember uh, that you like to have with your career. Well, well, as as you know, as a, a musician and an artist, you always have to renew yourself. So sometimes, like uh, uh, creating music, composing music, sometimes of course there's a challenge on it, and there is a piece you create, and you want it to go to a specific place. Uh, but in the end, actually, it's always it's always always come true, and it always uh, um, uh, gives you satisfaction. Working with other musicians, as I told you, from different uh, cultures, to create that new sound, which is I, uh, you know, being being in the United States, I told myself I don't I'm not gonna only do traditional Arabic music. I want to connect with other musicians uh, uh, and have a bigger audience who who really um, can listen to music, hear the Arabic mu Arabic style in the music, and also. Uh, can connect to their own to their own culture, um, so I wouldn't I wouldn't call it a challenge. I would call it a creativity, and um, I love doing it. I like it. I love the process. Sometimes you know there's obstacles here and there, but in the end, uh, the in the end the, the the project is very satisfying. Right. George, thank you so much for the time again and for sharing your story with us. I'm going to leave you a, a space now so you can share your um, social media information with the audience and have them see more of your work. Go ahead. Yeah, you can find my music if you Google just my name, George Laman. Of course, uh, you got to have the right spelling. <laughs> uh, it's Spotify. I have also Pandora and you can uh, YouTube. And also you can uh, buy my music and download it uh, on iTunes, Amazon. And uh, if you just Google my name, you'll find my music uh, actually 
George, I hope uh, your project to go back to Greece it's a reality soon. I wish a lot of success. And again, thank you so much for the time that you spend with me. A kiss until San Francisco. Always be well. Thank you. Bye bye. Until bye -bye. next time. Bye. Bye bye. So there you go. Support George Lamam work by following him on his social media and get enchanted by his beautiful sound. I will come back in a week with a new topping and a new friend. Nominate a person you love, you admire, or somebody you would like to support by writing me an email to conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com. Or you can also find me on Facebook, Conectados Abiyala. You can also message me through there. Let's get in touch and let the world know about them. Stay connected and until next time with me. Bye-bye.